Nothing. Thank you so much. Greg, I want to focus on the social media aspect of this, that this was live streamed on Facebook and only removed by Facebook after it was flagged to them by the New Zealand police. It showed up on other social media sites, on YouTube and on Twitter. They're not doing anything to stop this. Well, I don't... Uh, two things. I don't know what you can do. Right now, a few weeks ago on Twitter, they were suspending people for tweeting the phrase, learn to code. So if you're spreading yourself that thin, chasing that stuff, it's like having the FBI go after gum chewing on the subway. You're not going to get the real crime. They're trying to figure this out. I said this a couple of days ago. Technology is, a, is, is ahead of humanity. We, we aren't catching up to it, so we have this vulnerability. The biggest issue, we talk about this after every shooting, is the copycat effect. That's why we never mention the guy's name. That's why we try not to cover it. Blanket coverage, because blanket coverage uh, enlarges the spotlight, which is what they want. Each shooter cites previous shooters. That is a fact. Each one inspires the next. My worry is that because he filmed it, he gave it a wider, wider reach for more people to see, expanding his footprint. And it is our, I would not just go after the social media. It is our responsibility in the media to shrink that footprint to as small as possible. Uh, Jesse, and I should correct myself. I said they're not doing anything. Facebook says that it has 15,000 contractors and employees reviewing content as part of a 30,000 person team working on it. But I can say this, since they launched live streaming, there, was, there have been murders, there have been suicides. In fact, there was a man in Thailand who killed his 11 month old daughter in a live video. And that was about two years ago. And we still have this going on. Well, I don't know what anybody can do uh, about that because we live in a free society. So people can use technology however they want, and you have to catch up with the fact afterwards, and that's the unfortunate situation. Now, I, I don't understand how the media can lie about this guy's manifesto. I read it. The manifesto, if you read it, does not attribute this guy's philosophy to Donald Trump. This is a direct quote. The nation with the closest political and social values to my own is the People's Republic of China. This guy was an eco-nationalist, meaning he was a racist, and thought that the immigrant population of the earth was too fertile and they were overpopulating everything and were causing climate change and they needed to be eradicated. He said he's not a conservative, he's not a Nazi, and like Greg said, he was celebrating these wacko European mass shooters more than anything. So for the media to, to link Donald Trump and frame Donald Trump for some lunatic's actions halfway around the world is so irresponsible and it's exactly what the guy wanted. If you read the manifesto, the guy wanted division in this country. He wanted the left to overreact and take away guns from Republicans and wanted to balkanize North America because that would create more racial purity, in his opinion. So we were very responsible when the Bernie bro shot up Steve Scalise's baseball game. We didn't attribute that to Bernie. We didn't attribute that to the left-wing media. We said everyone's individually responsible for themselves. But the media doesn't do that when it's on the other side. They only frame Republicans. Because it's easy to tweet that this some, Trump was somehow responsible. Yeah, for this, I could say, I the, over and I over could again. say the Israeli-Palestinian violence that's happening today. I could point to Omar and say she instigated the anti-Semitism hate against Israel. And that's why there's problems. But I wouldn't do that because that's not true. So I, I would say, one, I, I think it just takes a special kind of evil to target people in a house of worship. That's supposed to be a place of refuge. They were praying. It's absolutely despicable and disgusting. We obviously pray for the victims and their families as well. Uh, I, I'm with Greg. I really struggle in the fact that I, I think there's a responsibility um, to deny these killers what they want. And this guy wants to live in infamy. Clearly, he wrote a manifesto because he wanted it out. And I'm all about denying that by not giving the manifesto any time and not giving him what he wants. And to Greg's point about the copycats, I spent all day today looking at statistics and studies about it. And it's real and it's scary. Dr. Stephen Pitt, who was a psychiatric did the psychiatric autopsy of the Columbine uh, shooting, he said that the shooters predicted with chilling and stunning accuracy how their actions would encourage other similarly disaffected individuals for doing the same thing. You'll get things like the Aurora, uh, Colorado movie theater shooting. During the trial, there were two uh, similar shootings in movie theaters in two weeks. After that, ABC in 2014 did an investigation found that 17 school shooters and 36 others that tried were all partially inspired by Columbine. The Newtown shooter had clippings, as you said, of previous mass uh, murders 
that took place. So clearly these guys want infamy and we should deny it them. And sometimes we give it to them. The Rolling Stone did that cover of the Boston bomber, put them on the cover. I remember after the Virginia Tech shooting, images of the guys with the guns. Let's deny them what they want. Don't give them the infamy. Juan, what about shutting down um, the uh, people's ability to use social media? Is that something I'm, well, I think the Democrats are getting on board We're, we're going to talk about that. In fact, we're going to talk about it later in this show because what we're seeing is an increased emphasis on some, either regulating or moderating or even in Elizabeth Warren's terms, breaking up some of the power because these folks are interested in money. It's unbelievable that this 17-minute video, the police want it stopped. It just keeps running. And of course, it spreads, and it spreads to a specific niche, you know, kind of the gamers and uh, a little bit of the hate people all combined here for young men. I think it's very troubling. I just want to say, I think, imagine if a Muslim had committed such an act. I can imagine that there are a lot of people who would have gone bananas on the Muslim community here in the United States and around the world. But what I think is the reality is we have white nationalist anger spreading globally. His manifesto was called the great wow. replacement and they're talking about uh you know just like we saw in charlottesville you will not replace us and we see this kind of anger uh, what, being what? spread in such a way that i think we have to address yeah. the idea that this white nationalist fervor is now without borders because of the internet and because of it we can't ig yeah. ignore it or play it down because it doesn't fit but one I, ideology or the other. Problem, what, we need to go, but the problem is, is that the rage that you saw here in the United States was directed at President Trump for something, a massacre that happened in New Zealand. Some in the media can't get enough of Beto O'Rourke or however the heck you say his first name. <laughs> He's all the buzz over the 2020 candidate. Is it overblown? Some in the media are overcome with Beto mania after the guy who lost to Ted Cruz officially announced he's running for president. Take a look at this. Look, I'm a little lighthearted today because I like this field. It's got a new levity to it, but it's not like we in the press created it. There's something out there that is magical. Well, he has a vibrancy, a youthfulness to him. Uh, he has a message which is largely cheerful. Seeing him is like, it's like a Jesus Christ superstar seeing this guy in front of people. He's got that celebrity aura about him. And in that moment, he was owning that. Safe to say they like him. But the question a lot of us are asking is what does he actually accomplish? Here's Nancy Pelosi responding, attempting to answer the question. Oh, it brought a great deal of vitality to, uh, to Congress. When he came, he came as a real champion for uh, the, the environment. Uh, he got a great deal of support from the environmental community in his district. Preserving our planet and protecting our people. There are at least two areas in addition to his vitality in so many other ways. So Juan, to me, it looks like she's struggling to answer the question. So why Beto? What has he done? Well, I think you know that around town today, the big cliche was, you know, Abe Lincoln only had one term as a congressman before he became president. But I think clearly the voters in El Paso liked him. And I think if you wanted to look at the actual record, he was pretty good, not only on environment, but on military spending. Today, though, I must say the guns are out for uh, Robert Francis, or <laughs> as, as the White House likes to call him, or Beto. Uh, the Washington Post had a front page story about how Republican donors had been key to the start of his, can of his career as a politician, and he had backed uh, spending for some malls that pushed people out of uh, low income neighborhoods. And then you also have to keep in mind that he, and I think this is really important, Lisa, sometimes I think the right can't hear this, but he did lose to Ted Cruz, but for the peop for people on the left, the idea that in Texas, he challenged Ted Cruz and raised a record amount of money, like 80 million bucks, I think, really makes him a superstar. Well, you're right. He did raise a record amount of money, Jesse. But part of that was because he was running against Ted Cruz, someone that the media hates, that the left hates. So they really protected him. And his record really wasn't examined. Now that's going to be a little bit different, Jesse. I was talking yesterday about the fact that he supports the Green New Deal, allegedly, but took more money from the fossil fuel industry than anyone else besides Ted Cruz. So this stuff's going to surface. And do you think it's going to end up having an impact on him? Yeah, it will. Uh, he will not release his new fundraising numbers, which is interesting. I'm not so sure they're going to beat Sanders's. They might not even beat Kamala's, like you said. If he doesn't have a demon, uh, as the left sees Ted Cruz as, maybe they're not going to put money in his pockets, but we'll see. I think Chris Matthews has another thrill up his leg. It's clear he's <laughs> the media darling right now, and there's already Beto backlash. Politico says no woman 
got that kind of coverage, and they don't like how this white male who has this privilege is being romanticized in the media. He's got the Vanity Fair cover. They had all the reporters down there in El Paso for the counter-Trump rally. And he's only been to Iowa once. And when he got up on that table in the coffee shop, there were more media reporters than there were voters. So we'll see about him. The weirder he gets, I kind of like him, to be honest <laughs> with you. He was in a hacking group. He wrote some crazy stuff about murder. Um, I don't know. He's kind of unpredictable, and that's kind of interesting, and he's more fun to cover than some of the other candidates. Interesting. So the hacking group is what, it, that, that just does it for you. Then. Yeah, that, that does it for me. <laughs> All right, Greg, there's a morning cons consult poll that found that 49% of those polled either hadn't heard of him or have no opinion on him. Do you think he's going to be able to differentiate himself? Those people are him? idiots because Beto's awesome. <laughs> you guys are so mean to the guy. Look, you know what? Why does the media love him? Because he is them. Yep. If you look at him, he's, you know, he's this lily white, non threatening liberal who likes their kind of music, mm -hmm. right? He's kind of edgy in, a, in an inoffensive way. Uh, um, he looks like he probably does Pilates. I don't know. <laughs> or maybe he has one of those new bikes that everybody's talking about. Yes, the Peloton. Pilot. Peloton, thank yeah, you. I don't know. Why thank are you looking at me? If he was I don't know. Does but he, he look he, like he rides a Peloton? No, no. 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 But if he's, if he's a, Repu away from a Republican with his minuses would get nowhere. The, you know, the, obviously the drunk driving arrest and the running away from the scene and the fact that he married an heiress. I mean, that stuff, the, if you were a Republican, would be endless. Wait a second, wait a second. I know what you're going to say to me. But I believe we have a president who has no political experience right. and who has a lot of... Problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he hasn't been arrested. Um, <laughs> okay. um, but you want to talk? Yes. You wanna, yes. The Mueller report yes. is not out. The Mueller report. <laughs> you want to talk collusion? No, you want to talk collusion? Look at the, like, how, what, how, what a coincidence that he declared when the cover came out. I mean, that, so that Vanity Fair yeah, knew. The media loves it. So they, they, they it's this, the thing that gets me mad. Not mad, but I find it humorous, actually. How does the media not notice when they're fanboying? Like, when yeah. it, how can they not, when they're talking about somebody they love, do they go deaf? And they can't hear how hilarious they sound when they're talking about, they're, they're basically vomiting valentines, you know, projectile valentines. And it's, it's we like, don't do that. Dude, I've had, you know, you know, I had more men talk about how he's kind of a hembo, and women don't see that. A Quite frankly, the men, you're right, the men. A hembo. What's what's that? Like, what's a hembo? Oh, oh, a male bimbo. The, the men are oh, more into him than um, the women. That's and offensive. by the way, I just want to <laughs> say a couple of things. Well, Jesse, you know, if I squint and move my chair away, you kind of look like him. Oh, don't you dare. No. Oh my God. I looked at their website. There's nothing about policy. There's just some merch for sale and a, a couple of photos of Beto. One where he has sweat dripping down his Ooh. face. Uh, we're going to get that. Yeah, exactly. So here are, I wrote some suggestions of things he could sell on his website to raise more money. How about um, a beard kit that you stipple on so you at least look like you can split wood? Oh. I think that's his voting base. All right. Well, maybe he'll show up in Iowa like that. Maybe we'll see. All right. Well, America's top general is ripping Google. Find out why next. Stay with us. America's top general warning about the potential dangers of Google's relationship with China. The work that Google is doing in China is, direct, is indirectly benefiting the Chinese military. We watch with great concern when industry partners work in China knowing that there is that indirect benefit. And frank, frankly, indirect may be, uh, may be not a full characterization of the way it really is. It's more of a direct benefit to the Chinese military. The company recently dropped its bid for a $10 billion Pentagon contract, saying that would conflict with its corporate values. Apparently not so with the Chinese. In fact, this is so interesting to me, Dagan. What General Dunford said was you have a $5 trillion share of the Chinese economy that is state-run. So when Google does business with the Chinese military, it essentially then is funneling that information, that strategy and technology into the Chinese economy as well. This is all thievery. Yeah, and then the, the company, because of outrage within the, the liberal walls of Google, decided to not do business with the U.S. Defense Department. So let's be clear, Google is not in favor of protecting the land and the nation and the people that allowed Google to be formed in the first place. It is this kind of delusional moralizing from the people at Google. Their motto used to be, don't be evil. Well, they got rid of that, clearly, if they're doing business with the Chinese. And the, the delusional moralizing that really hurts America. And I just want to point, I just quickly do the imitation of Ruth Porat, the CFO, after Hillary Clinton lost and they had this big company meeting. And she was 
talking about Hillary losing and what a massive punch to the gut it was, and it was really painful. That's Google. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> upset. <laughs> so I think but, uh, that's, so, that's Google. That's who works at Google. Uh, Jesse, so what they refused to do for the Pentagon was work on cloud storage uh, type technology, and they said it was in violation of the company's principles. A lot of the workers said this. How do you interpret this? Well, do the company's principles adhere to the communist Chinese principles? No, they have some not. pretty crazy principles over in China. Uh, one child policy, uh, no freedom of speech. The Chinese have a, a project Dragonfly that Google was working on with them where they can censor all sorts of internet con content and it looks like Google's okay with that. What they're doing, one, is they're putting profits above patriotism and you have to ask yourself, is Google an American company anymore? Or do they, are they just this amorphous multinational conglomerate that just does whatever they want to whoever they want in search for the highest bidder? $21 billion in revenue over there in Asia, that's a pretty penny. Um, and like you said in the beginning, if you invest Google in China in a commercial enterprise, they just transfer that right to the state-owned corporations. So there's a direct pipeline from commercial interests to the military industrial complex, which is run by the communist Chinese and they steal it on top of that. Uh, Lisa, you know, Elizabeth Warren has been trying to say we should break up some of the Facebook, Google, Amazon, that they're just too big and too powerful. Jesse just suggested maybe they, they don't have any sense of loyalty, loyalty to the United States. Well, and a lot of this comes from the criticism over data, which I think is one of the biggest fake news stories of all time. The Obama <clears throat> team did the exact same thing that Cambridge Analytica did. The only reason anyone cared about it was because they got caught in President Trump's orbit campaigns, both the RNC and the DNC have massive databases of consumer information for voters across the country. Every politician that was sitting on those committees pointing the fingers as at Mark Zuckerberg.